So I'll be talking about online variance reduction for stochastic optimization. This is joint work with uh, Andreas Kraus and Kefir Levy. So the question of uh, variance reduction pops up in many areas of computer science research. In stochastic optimization, especially in the, in the convex setting, we would prefer our gradients estimates to have low variance. The motivation behind this uh, is illustrated in this uh, toy animation, where on the left, we plot what happens to SGD when it has access to gradients with, uh, with high variance. And on the right, what happens to SGD when it has access to gradients with low, <coughs> gradients with low variance. So uh, here we mention, uh, I want to highlight two, uh, two techniques in stochastic optimization to confront the variance. The first path is taken by SVRG and friends. These methods come up with uh, auxiliary functions that are added to the gradients, such that they don't introduce bias, but actually reduce the variance. And the second technique is important sampling. The motivation behind this being that uniform subsampling ignores the structure of the data, so can produce high variance estimates. So it would be rather, it would be clever to come up with good sampling distributions that we can reduce the uh, variance with. In this work, we also take this direction and show how to come up with good sampling distributions uh, based on multi arm bandits. The setting is as follows. We have a data set consisting of n points. We consider t rounds. In each round t, a point xi gets assigned a loss lty. So if we look at, we want to estimate the, uh, so we also estimate the expected loss. According to important sampling, we could have chosen instead of uniform sampling distribution, any sampling distribution. And if wanna, we don't want to introduce bias, we have to introduce uh, importance weights such that uh, one, over n, uh, 1 over n times the sampling distribution. So our goal in this paper is to choose these sampling distributions such that we minimize the cumulative variance of these uh, important surveyed estimates. Uh, in a second, we will see what's the relationship to stochastic optimization here. So if, if we go ahead and write this variance out, we actually notice that only the cumulative second moments depend on the sampling distributions. So I will denote this term as our FTPT, as our cost function at, uh, at round t. So we approach the problem from online learning perspective with bandit feedback, where our protocol will go as follows. We have a player, we have an adversary playing in T rounds. In each round, the, sampling, uh, the player chooses the sampling distribution and samples a, po a point according to that. Meanwhile, in parallel, the adversary chooses the losses. The player communicates the chosen point, so the chosen index to the adversary, and the adversary responds with the bandit feedback uh, at the loss at the chosen point, and uh, additionally, the, the player incurs the cost FTPT. So in online learning, the natural thing uh, as a performance measure is to consider the regret in which we compare the cumulative second moments so the cumulative cost functions with respect to the best sampling distribution in hindsight with respect to these, these uh, costs. Now for this purpose of this slide, I will replace the regret with this old formulation. And so far about, I talked about losses, but to see the relationship to stochastic optimization, it makes sense to instantiate the losses are gradient norms. And now why is that? So if you look at the uh, performance bounds, such as for Edegrad, then the performance is upper bounded by terms, uh, which, also include, which also include a term that is a cumulative second moments of the gradient norms. And if you look at our regret uh, formulation and we, and we do the pattern matching, we actually see that if the loss is the gradient norm, that's, that's, then this is exactly what we're minimizing. So the contributions of this paper are as follows. So this turns out that is this exact same setting has been analyzed uh, in two works parallel with ours, but they don't provide additive regret guarantees with respect to the best sampling distribution in hindsight. And in this work, we do that with a bound of L times one to the n to the power of one thirds, t to the power of two thirds, where L is the upper bound on the square loss, and we do the, like we hide logarithmic terms here. Now we also motivate why regret minimization is meaningful in this setting. So in online learning, it's very natural to look at the best sampling distribution in hindsight. But here, what we really would prefer is to have a comparison against, against the best per round sampling distributions. And in this paper, we show that on the mild assumption that the losses are uh, small, uh, slowly changing on average, then actually our guarantee with respect to the best sampling distribution in hindsight translate to the ideal baseline plus uh, square root of t regret. And then we finally show how to implement our algorithm efficiently. So now I would like to uh, give you the intuition behind the algorithm and the very high level uh, proof. 
So first, in order to get our uh, ideas working, we look at the full information setting in which we assume that we observe all the losses. So not just the loss that the, uh, not just the loss associated to the point that we've chosen, but associated to all the points. And we use the follow the regularized reader framework, which says that at round t, we should choose our sampling distribution such that we minimize the cumulative losses costs incurred up to, up to uh, iteration t minus one plus the regularizer that we make sure that we, we don't change our uh, decisions too abruptly. Now the first question is uh, how to cho choose this regularizer. So we should choose this regularizer in such a way that we have nice analytical form for this PT update so that we can actually get a, a practical algorithm out of this. And we would like also to penalize low entropy. So in this work, we choose that this regularizer as gamma times some of the inverse probabilities. And that will give a nice update step of PT, which says that in PT, uh, in, at time t, this sample probability should be proportional to the uh, square root of the cumulative, uh, cumulative losses up to time t, t, t minus 1 plus this regularizer gamma. This regularizer gamma which will be a hyperparameter of our algorithm. So in full information setting, we can prove that the regret is upper bounded by, so, so regret is bounded by L times square root of T. Again, L is the upper bound on the square losses. And the proof idea goes as follows. So if we look at the regret, where we are comparing ourselves with the performance of the best sampling distribution in hindsight, we can quickly realize that we, since we're dividing by sampling distributions, uh, probabilities here, and if we're close to the vertices of the simplex, then both the costs and the regularizers can blow up. So we're dealing with blowing up terms here. So natural thing to do is to consider the regret with respect to this red simplex, the restricted simplex, which is, this is the first term. So regret against the restricted si best, best sampling distribution for the restricted simplex in hindsight, and plus the additional term that we're actually considering the restricted simplex instead of the full simplex. It turns out that these two terms separately can be upper bounded, and then we can minimize over the parameters of the restricted simplex to get the regret bound. But Ultimately, we're interested in a bandit setting that we actually don't observe the losses of associated to all points because this no, is not practical in, from an optimization point of view, but just only for the chosen point. Now, for this, we use uh, techniques known from XP3, and two techniques. I mean, the first one is modifying the loss estimates if you only observe one point, such so that we get unbiased estimates. And this we do with dividing by sampling probabilities and multiplying by uh, multiplying by the indicator function of sampling a speci specific index, and this will give an unbiased uh, loss estimate. But now we see the problem that since we are dividing again by uh, probability, uh, sampling probabilities, we can make our cost functions, our, loss, our modified losses blow up. So the second uh, technique that we use from XP3 is we avoid this fact by mixing the, the sampling distributions with the uniform distribution. And now the uniform distrib mixing parameter will be theta. This will be another hyperparameter to our algorithm. So finally, now having this in mind, we can rely on the full information setting, the analysis from the full information setting, plus we need Friedman's inequality to account for non-oblivious adversaries in order to get our desired regret bound. And the result of this is a simple five light algorithms, algorithm that we can use uh, in top of our favorite optimizer, for example, Adagrad or so on. We, and we use this method for sample points, so we don't just choose uniformly, but according to this mechanism, which says that we have this W, the weight accumulator. In each, at round T, we set our sampling distribution proportional to the uh, accumulator pass uh, regularizer that comes out of theoretical analysis. We mix with uniform, and then we sample the point according to this sampling distribution. Now, the algorithm as it stands here is not practical again, because both the sampling and the update takes O of n, but it, this can be done efficiently in uh, log n time with, uh, with segment trees. So I'd be happy to talk uh, to you about more about uh, this algorithm and the ideas behind uh, at, our, at the poster session. Thank you. Thank you. Time for a quick question. Yeah. Good, good. So, so, so this regulation of 1 over P isn't very unusual. So are there specific reasons for this reaction? So the uh, very first uh, reason was to get an analytical update. Right, because we are dividing again by sampling probabilities, we, we need to have a regularizer. If you put something like uh, P log P, 
then we don't get an analytical tractable formula for the update step. If I can add, it's not unusual. This is the tra inverse trace. So it's used, for example, in undergrad, for example. Yes. So that was the first uh, motivation to it. Can I ask if this is not a, uh, is this a um, bended convex optimization, right? It's uh, basically a case of that. Uh, we use it in convex yeah. settings, yeah. So okay. does the kind of general results for bended convex optimization give a root, root t? Maybe worse dependence on the dimension, but root t bound? Uh, I'm, I don't know, actually. Uh, like what Seb uh, result or this kind of? I, I'm not sure because it's unbounded. That's the only thing that I'm kind of concerned about. But if you restrict, you have a t, you have it depends on t, the upper bound. Okay, interesting to talk about. <laughs> okay. okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>